So, yeah. Welcome to the first, what is it, the inaugural? The inaugural. Episode of So Unprofessional. That's right, and I'm very unprofessional. You try to be professional, but I'm really unprofessional. Are you going to explain? Well, I'm Gus. This is Barksdale. Yeah. Are you, are you going to tell the viewers why you uh, won't put that wire underneath your shirt? Because I'm, I'm not a rat. Are you I'm, sure? Yeah, I ain't no motherfucker sure. Check my paperwork. I show up to any paperwork party. You invite me, I'll show up with my paperwork, bro. I ain't no rat, and I just don't feel comfortable with this naughty systems recording device under my shirt, like I'm recording people's conversations. Well, they, they didn't give us money to promote their device. Okay. I'm just so not. can you stop naming them? All right, this, they give us some money. This income, this in, uh, indescriptive name recording device under my shirt, like I'm fucking Proctor from Power. Trying to record conversations. That's just not me. So I'd rather let you know that I have a wire on with a microphone and I'm speaking into the microphone. So just to let you know, we've done a podcast, we've done a radio show, but yeah. for so unprofessional, we're gonna talk about current events, yeah, hot topics, uh-huh, things that happened recently. You know what really happened recently? Think of my birthday. It was your birthday? Yeah, man. I'm drunk. Everybody who cares, please raise your hand. You're by yourself. You bought me a bottle, so you cared too. Yeah, I cared earlier when I gave you the bottle. Oh, I can't use I don't profanity care. on this TV show, huh? We try not to use profanity. Oh, uh, we got somebody editing now. That's cool. As long as I got it out of my system. So the first thing we're going to talk about today <laughs> is apparently Christy Teigen. You know who Christy Teigen is? No. She's married to John Legend. Ah. She revealed that she gave it up on the first date. Cool, that's why they married. She had that snappy dappy dugout. So do you think it's a good idea for women to give it up on the first day? You just order, because I'm not buying a house if I've never walked through the house. Are you uh, are you comparing a woman to a house? Yes, that's your home. Hmm. So I don't know, like, every woman I've known. How the fuck would I, well, I'm sorry. How the bleep would I ever invest 300000 into a house that I've never walked through. If this is my wife, I'm going to invest. Yeah, but it's on the first date. You don't first want her day, to... I want all of it on my mouth, on my on my penis. I want all of it. See, my, my only problem is... Okay. I get scared of a woman who gives it up to me on the first day. I'm like, well, who else did she give it up to on the first well, day? Well, we, we had an adult age. When she was 17, if she was sucking... If she was performing fellatio when you first meet her at 17, she's like, she's just someone that's using her body in the wrong way. But when she's over a certain age, if she's, if she's performing fellatio and giving up her vagina, that's because she decided that you were worthy of it and she gave it to you. So you wouldn't lose any respect for her? Nah, because she made the decision to give it to me. I, 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 I ain't got no game, like I'm a real man. Like what if, I don't have no way to walk up to you and talk you out your drawers. All I know how to be- So isn't that even worse? Like. You don't have any game, and she still gave it up to you. That's right, you. Because, because for me... So what if, a, a real, what if like, 40 niggas in front of you had game? She's going to see through that, because if she's giving it to me on the first night, apparently she's giving it to you off of vibes and, and who she feel comfortable with. All that gaming and talking sideways out your mouth, that's not going to do nothing but dry her up. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to make her moist with, with, with masculinity and misogyny. I thought we weren't starting off like that. I'm just being me. If you don't want me to be me, I'll give them back their snazzy recording device. I guess we can deal with it. Yeah. I, I'm going to get her moist off misogyny and masculinity and me. So have you ever had a good relationship with a woman that gave it up on the first day? Yes, I did. It was a three-year relationship. She gave it up the first night. And you respected her? I, I respected her from the first minute until the last minute. I'm sorry, I, I gotta be honest, I, I never respected a woman who gave it up on the first date. Because you caught up with stereotypes. The stereotypes is, oh. I was like, if she if gave she, it to me on the first date, she gave it to everybody else. I don't care who she gave it to. <laughs> like, bro, we not dealing with virgins. What you want? You want a 14-year-old virgin? Go, go knock yourself out. I used to lie to myself. No, I don't want a 14-year-old virgin. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> we, we talking about grown women. Grown women are not virgins. But uh, I like to lie to myself. Well, that's the problem. You want to lie to yourself. Me, I'm going to be completely honest with myself. There's been another penis in her mouth 
There's been another penis in her vagina. She's been there before. I'm just trying to get. I've always felt me. good, like when a girl lies and be like, like you. I've only been with like two guys. I don't. And I've been believe. celibate for nine months. I don't want to. That makes me feel good, all. even if I know she's lying. No, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be lied to. I want the truth so that I can decide whether I'm gonna play ball or not. Don't lie so to me. So with a mind if a chick was just like, yo, I got I don't bombed she, out last night. I don't night. care if she be like, yo, I was with a hundred niggas in my <laughs> lifetime. It's cool. Did you take a shower this morning? Did you brush your teeth and all that other shit before you came here? Did she got to yeah. get a checkup first? Oh, then it's just like new. Did she got to go to Planned Parenthood first? If I plan on taking the rub off. Okay. Yeah, listen, man. We have to promote safe sex. I do promote safe sex. When I was in college, me and my homies took it uh, 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 every quarter we went to, to Planned Parenthood. Well, really, it was about joking because if somebody came back with chlamydia or some <laughs> shit, we <laughs> made fun of him. <laughs> oh, you a dirty big nigga. <laughs> but other than that, nah. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Hey, that's just what it is, man. It's next, next topic. Okay. My guy, Eric Reed. That's my guy. He got guy. a job. That's first of all. He got a job before Kaepernick. Eric Reed. Coming out of college, coming into the league, was reminiscent of Sean Teller. And if you're a football guy and you win the big hitting safeties and guys that just is rangy and can play the game the right way from 20 yards from line to scrimmage, Eric Reed was your guy. Yo, I repeat that, Sean Teller. I repeat the one that he ran up in his crib. Yeah, he ran in his crib, crib. He came back with pistols, pistol whip niggas, shot niggas. They came in the crib, shot him in his leg by accident. It hit a major artery and he bled out. You know, Sean Teller was thorough. He was on his he was on his way to probably being the greatest safety to ever play football. Real freakish. 6'4, 230 pounds, hit like a linebacker, move like a cornerback. He's just a different guy. And Eric Reed was along those lines, you know, and he rolled with his quarterback. Well, he got caught up in the whole Kaepernick thing, right? Well, I won't call it caught up. I say this. When you play football, 53-man roster, you're taught that the quarterback is the leader of your team. And how the quarterback goes, you go. And so when Kaepernick decided that he was going to kneel for social injustice, he stood right beside him, right? He stood next to his quarterback because as a soldier, that's how he was trained. And as his quarterback got caught up, in the politics of taking that knee, so did he. But the Carolina Panthers was like, yo, we fucking ass. We need somebody <laughs> that can make an impact. Like, you can hit, huh? Yeah, oh, oh, we don't, we don't oh, care you about can it. cover, huh? Run, nigga, run. And they signed him, and my guy came in. I feel like he's going to make an impact from the first time they put him on the field. I feel like that's a great signing. My New England Patriots is in, no, in negotiations with signing Kaepernick. I think that's a great signing for us. And, like, you know, just moving forward, man, I just think that, uh, you know, I'm glad Eric Green got signed. And his brother was just, his little brother was just in the NFL draft. And he was talented and revered as a first round safety who didn't get picked into the third and fourth round because of the things that his brothers was a part of it. So you, it's all politics, man, and it's just all it's just all a system systematically um, finding ways to limit and cut off access to the things that need that we need that they do so, to us, man. So do you think do you think him actually being signed now does anything for the? Uh black empowerment movement or what they're no, trying to come across no. or it's just the, the fact NF that the NFL knows that the longer this Kaepernick thing goes on and Nike is behind Kaepernick and best believe if they behind Kaepernick Kaepernick is doing something in the works to work out for Eric Reed right now the NFL is doing damage control if Nike is down with Kaepernick we going to align ourselves with Kaepernick because all of college football is aligned with Nike you understand what I'm saying? Nike's a big company. Yeah, and so if Nike's the if, if Kaepernick's the face of some Nike promotion, 
then I mean all the black college athletes coming out are going online and stuff with Kaepernick. You could turn around and your whole first three rounds of the NFL draft is taking a knee during the, the Star Spangled Banner. I can't front because back in the day when you uh, you had the uh, choice to buy like the Adidas yeah. uh, cheap jersey, yeah. football jersey. Yeah, or the Nike it. Authentic. <laughs> you going to buy the Nike Authentic. I mean, Nike is just what it is. And Nike position itself. I ain't gonna lie, I bought a couple of the uh, fake stitch ones. You yeah, remember, they, like they, they ain't had the uh, screen printed ones no more. They had like the fake stitch ones with yeah. like iron yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I never hair. bought none of that shit. I, I bought one. The real. I'm dark skinned. I can't wear fake shit. People know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shootout. It ain't no. Uh, nigga, look. You know, I'm looking at this shit. shit. Nobody got shot know. yet. Okay, where the people getting shot? I see windows. This is a bad version. But ain't sure. Who got shot? Look at the look at the boy just walking away. He got hit. He gonna slide under the car. <laughs> Pussy nigga, run. <laughs> where the fuck is this shit at? You gonna duck down? Is you shooting back or you? Oh, they smoked some bitch ass. <laughs> They smoked your bitch ass high behind the car door and then drove off. So who died? I don't know if anybody watch this shit again. <laughs> Was you recording that? Uh, Was you recording that? Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta watch the dude in the uh, the something. <laughs> he just chilling. <laughs> hey, lawyer, I plead the fifth for everything. Yo, look at my man creeping and crawling behind the Chrysler. He ain't shoot nobody. <laughs> My man in the white shirt don't walk me off like, I'm smoking a cigarette. That's y'all shit. And then they smoke my man through the door. Wow, you pussy nigga. <laughs> my man hot in the car. Ah. Ah, well, good shit. Nobody died. Yeah, welcome back to So Unprofessional. This is your guy, the most unprofessional, Mr. Barksdale. I want to introduce y'all to my lawyer. Miss Brittany Gardner. Miss Brittany Gardner, <laughs> number one DUI lawyer in the city of Philadelphia. State, Pennsylvania. I'm, and you're right. Thank you. The state <laughs> of Pennsylvania, from Alaska to Nebraska, you call a number and she got you. She can't do it from Alaska to Nebraska. From Maine to Spain. She can only do it in the, from Turkey in the to, states that from, she's got past the bar in. From it? Turkey to Albuquerque. World renowned. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, please. What do you do? Okay. She's so a lawyer, Jackie. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you ready? Yes. Okay. Um, so I am a defense attorney in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I primarily practice criminal law. I do a lot of DUIs. I also do a lot of family law, license restoration, traffic mm. stuff, mm. a little bit of landlord tenant. But mm. so yeah. Criminal? Mostly. Retainer fee? Uh, we we'll have to talk about that off camera. Fifth. There we go. <laughs> so where's your office located? 325 Chestnut Street. Nice. Old City. I mean, Old City near recess. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have five because I don't know what we're talking about. Because you're a nut. I think it's a nightclub, right? Yep. Yeah. So what's your website? It is www.gartnerlawdefense.com Nice. And if you were my lawyer and I got caught with like a pound of crack in my pocket right now, what was the probability of me getting off? <laughs> <laughs> well, first I want to find out how you got arrested in the first place. Mm -hmm. So. And then why you have crack in your pocket? Well, I mean, that's a different story. Uh, and why is it a pound of crack? You know, you or just don't know a crack. Okay. Oh, that's 2.2 .2 pounds of crack. <laughs> so I just want to know why you have a pound of crack in your pocket. When it could be anywhere else on your person or the vehicle you're operating, but it's in your pocket. You might what if be it's a in rat. a duffel bag? Well, how did they get in a duffel bag? I'm sorry, William. Someone put it in a duffel bag. bag. Well, why do you have the duffel bag? Get him. I just want to know what's the probability if I get caught with a kilo She's of She's asking crack. the questions that <laughs> matter whether you're getting off. You're probably going to jail. Thank you. <laughs> well, 
Why, why am I calling you if you're going to jail anyway? Because you're not in the right situations. <laughs> See, me, if I call you and I got caught with a pound of crack, it definitely wasn't on my person. It definitely <laughs> was somewhere in the vehicle where other people... So I, let me ask the Lord, if I had a kilo of crack, mm -hmm. where should I put said kilo of crack? Fifth, what the fuck are you asking me? Because <laughs> I'm not going to have a kilo of crack. I would hope not. I've been watching a lot of Snowfall lately. Are you bugging the fuck But hopefully you don't have it on your person. Just learn from that. <laughs> so, you're here from your, for your law what? expertise. That's it. Yeah. And they we were talking about- locked up my OG We bill. were talking about Pill Cosby. Yo, oh, right. please stop calling my Pill OG Cosby. Pill. They locked up my OG bill. Handed out- For fake Quaid rape cases. Like it's candy. For fake rape cases. Get them out. Now. How we get them, how we getting them out? Well, his attorneys are filing some appeals. As they should. So, I mean, but he'll have to fight his appeals from- From the jail. Yes. When you're 89, first of all, if you're 19 fighting a case from the jail, it's tough. So 89 is just different. I'm he's not- 81. Yeah. He's 89. I'm going to 89 when you get out. Can you hear me? I'm, listen, I just want to be real. Like, I'm not fighting no case from the jail. If I can't post bail, I'm just pleading guilty. So, you gonna sit down on the doorknob with me? What the f no way! <laughs> Bro, you'll sit in jail for like two years. During the trial, they spend back trying to give you time served. No, no, no. They're being nice to you. Time no, served. No, leave me alone. So, how are we getting my OG out? Talk to me. Well, his attorneys are first going to file appeal, so mm -hmm. they're already in the process, I believe. Um, some grounds that they have for filing an appeal. I think that one of the jurors said um, from the beginning that they already thought that Bill Cosby was guilty. Mm -hmm. um, another um, grounds for appeal um, was the fact that the previous DA, DA of Montgomery County said that he wouldn't prosecute um, Bill Cosby. If so. he pled no contest and gave up that statement, right? Yes. That's why I hate Montgomery County. Let me ask you a question. Would you ever let your client give a statement? If they gave me gave me the safety net that they gave Bill Cosby, people? I'm trusting my lawyer. Well, now that we know all that we know that they can just do it anyway, would you let your client give a statement? I mean, it is ultimately up to the client whether they decide to do it or not. I can advise them which way they should go. Um, but I mean, if you are giving something in return, it's not always a bad choice. So in Bill Cosby's case, would you advise that statement and if no contest plea? I mean, back then, probably yeah. So with this Me Too movement, I don't think people realize that this movement was gonna happen the way it has happened so far. So back then, maybe it was a good idea. So. Um, I know it was definitely a lot. He did admit to some things in his deposition that hurt him in this trial. Yep. So, and, and, and that's the thing that bothers me because they guaranteed him a certain concession <laughs> and violated that the terms of that agreement. Yeah, and that's what got him booked. So I, you mean to tell me I paid her three point five million, pled not guilty, and you promised me a concession, and now. You violated the terms of my concession. I'm out of my three point million, and I pled no contest to a case that if we went to court at that time, I'd have spanked it. She'd have looked stupid. So I guess at the end of the day, I guess my only question before we wrap up this segment mm -hmm. is, is the, as a lawyer, is there any advice you would give to one of your clients who likes to give pills to women and have sex with them while they passed out. <laughs> Any advice? I'll advise them not to do that. I mean, the best advice is don't break the law. Yeah. So, next we're gonna talk about uh, Botham Jean. Who the hell is that? <laughs> He's the gentleman that was just chilling in his house. He got smoked. And the female police officer. Shot him shot him in his own residence. And they found weed. And she said she shot him because she thought it was her apartment and he did not follow her commands. That's what, what? She, that's what she said. <laughs> so apparently, 
Because I'm about to say some real goofy shit. No, so hold on. Stop, no, stop, no, stop. No, hold on. I'm not no, processing. Her excuse. I'm okay. not processing everything you say. Okay. You got to stop. Okay, I'm going to say bro, it slower bro, 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 stop. I need to ask a question, and then you just validate it right now. Okay. That's how I process. She walked into his home. Yes. She thought it was her home. Correct. She killed him in his home thinking it was her home. Correct. Because he didn't comply with demands in his From home. From an off-duty police officer. <laughs> that she thought was her home. Correct. All right. All right. No, we continue on. And they waited uh, about four or five days before they actually arrested her. They let her go that night. Yeah. On her own free will. So she's under arrest right now for what charges? Well, she's out on bail for manslaughter. Manslaughter? Miss Lawyer, <laughs> is that manslaughter of murder? Well, she was charged with manslaughter, and um, in the state of Texas, manslaughter means that you recklessly cause the death of another person. Yeah, that's usually manslaughter. So but she maliciously killed a man in his own home. That, shouldn't that be murder? Okay. Well, I, I'm sorry, Fifth. <laughs> well, I, that's how their um, prosecutors thought to charge it. Um, if more facts come out, I know that they, some people were saying that they probably had some sort of relationship. So if it was deliberate and premeditated, it would have been Ooh, first, first degree murder. Well, they yes. said that actually they have two witnesses that also live in a complex that they heard her knocking on the door saying, let me in. So apparently her version. Well, she's a liar. It doesn't sound like her version is real. Like so. apparently she wanted him. She didn't just happen to walk in the, uh, in the house. Uh, she requested they open the door, and there was he a refused. There was a confrontation. He he wound up opening the door at some point. I wouldn't. And that's when he got smoked. See, that's the yeah. problem. When crazy women knock on your door, it doesn't matter what race she is, don't open it. See, my only my only problem is that she has the audacity to say he did not comply with my orders. Yes, you wanted me to open my door, crazy woman, when I had female company. So there's no way I'm opening. Miss Brittany Gardner. Yes. <laughs> so, in, I got a question. In your own home, are do you are you required to follow the orders of a uh, off-duty police officer? No. So, do you, why do you think she brung up the fact that he didn't comply with her orders? Because he was well, a black man and she <laughs> was a devil. And she, <laughs> she's also a cop. So, um, you know, sometimes cops think that they have these special superpowers that they don't have, but um, we have the greatest protections in our home. So police aren't even on duty police at that, aren't allowed to come into our home unless they have an, a search warrant or if there are exigent circumstances, so. Like somebody ran in the home that was eluding police? Right, so if there is like a, like a yes, so like a felon on the run or if there's some type of emergency where police, that's not me. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> where um I just lost my train of thought circumstances where they were eluding police <laughs> right so if someone is on the run from a crime and then they run into a home then the police officers can follow that person into the home so but that was not the, the, the instance this, yeah. here so so what, what would your be advice for anyone who who a police officer knocks on their door and tells them to open the door. Don't respond. I didn't ask you. <laughs> I know my rights, bitch. Well, I mean, if they don't have a search warrant, you don't need to I'm, let any. I'm you don't have to let them in. To smoke my black and brown and watch Netflix. Oh, yeah. Open the door, Mr. Lamar. Yeah, where's the warrant? <laughs> Slide it under the door, boss. <laughs> oh, no warrant. Y'all be cool, how y'all be cool? Thank you. I was actually, one time I was, a, you know, I had a roommate that I actually, um, uh, he had child support problems. Okay. And I think pe more people need to understand that they don't need to open the door. So I don't think it was, I think it was the sheriffs. It, weren't, it wasn't the police. But they were knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. And they continued to knock on the door. And I heard them knocking on the door. I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to sleep. 
<laughs> we're just not going to answer the door. Yeah, so they had, that sounds like they have an arrest warrant. So an arrest warrant and a search warrant are two, two different, different things. things. A arrest warrant is a body warrant. Uh, 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 yes. That's the lawyer. They came for the body. Right. So if there is a search warrant, that is the police um, that's giving the police a right to search your home for whatever they're looking for. If there is an arrest warrant, they're only supposed to come into your home to arrest uh, the person. So well, the problem, well, the problem was someone's girlfriend got scared when they said, we're going to stay out here till you answer the door. <laughs> and she actually opened the door. It was my girlfriend. It wasn't, wasn't my girlfriend. Oh, is this a personal experience? No, I wasn't there. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck he's talking No, this was a personal experience. So I think that... I think the lesson is that she probably shouldn't have answered the door. The she lesson, probably shouldn't have, but if she did, then that's that's on her. The lesson no, is, it was on him because he was hiding in the closet. Oh, the lesson okay. is, is this. If they come with an arrest warrant, I can have 50 keys on the table. They're only there for him. Oh, uh, no, they sir. They extract him. No. See, so look, she's correct. No. I can't have my 50 keys on no, the table. No, because is, that is a, an exception to having a warrant. If, if something is in plain view, the office officers can take that and arrest you for it. Oh, don't take my 50. So are they, now, is, is this the same that goes with the sheriff as well as the police? Or yeah, it, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not saying this is a true story, but when these, hypothetically, when these people came in the house, they said, oh, it sure smells like marijuana. Well, they always say that. But it did smell like marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, lawyer, for protecting us. No problem. <laughs> Next on the agenda, we're going to take a a look at what August Alcina mm -hmm. uh, put yeah. on Instagram about nigga. Jada Pinkett, Will Smith's wife. <laughs> now, this is quote. He wrote, I don't believe in luck. I believe in God's divine order. And you are an example of God's divinity and its covering over my life. A beautifully complex <laughs> individual you are. I could spend a lifetime decoding you. <laughs> Thank you for your laughter. Thank you for seeing my heart and character and not measuring me based upon what I, where I come from. Jaden, I gave him some pussy. You see me for who I am and what, I, what I'm going to be. Even when I can't see me. Thank you for challenging me on a daily basis. You're a little piece of heaven here on earth. <laughs> the fortune in my cookie, the vet in my rookie. You are love personified. There hasn't been enough diction created to articulate or express the capacity of my love for you. It is simply beyond measure and human comprehension. So as my soul continues this quest, I just like to say, happy birthday best. You're nothing like the rest. Hey. Like that. So this him, man <laughs> said something about she, someone else. Yo, yo. Yeah, that's interesting. She gave him some pussy, bro. The question is that is that regular pussy? Like that gotta be like so. That's achievement pussy. The lawyer shouldn't be here for this conversation. <laughs> or I'm gonna walk away because Like how would you feel if, if a woman made that made that statement about your man? <clears throat> well, my man isn't Will Smith, so I will say that. I also <laughs> think that they have open relationships. So, I mean, if it's open, then I don't see the problem. I'm saying you are speaking from a politically correct <laughs> stance. I'm going to speak what? from the nigga stance. She gave him some pussy, bro. But well, that's what I'm saying. They have open relationships. But I'm just saying, open relationships still calls for respect to the marriage. You don't put no shit on no Instagram <laughs> like that about my wife. <laughs> People been shot in the fucking head for less. For less. <laughs> Niggas been killed for opening the door for people's wives. You wanna go ahead and go on Instagram, call my wife all this extravagant shit? Is my wife gonna sat on your face, nigga? How you know what my wife got? You better back the fuck up off my lady before I catch a case. Yo, August I've seen it completely out of bounds. And all that player <laughs> shit, all that player shit he talked in his music, he done got some pussy and violated the code. I think he just caused her strife in her household. How you think Will Smith gonna read that shit? 
Or kill his school and read that it's shit. It's been said he's been, they have an open relationship. He's been knocking off chicks forever. The kids don't know that. <laughs> well, they know it now. Nah, that's not cool. <laughs> that's not cool. You got you got the Willow and fucking Jaden coming home questioning what the fuck is this? This is shit like Harlem Nights when the bull called up his wife was like, I ain't never coming home. But he, but, but he did that while the kids was young. It's different when them kids is 14, 15, 18, 19, 20. Fuck is you doing? Like that's just some real shit. I throw August Alcino for fucking fifth. Fifth. I'm sorry. So exactly what would you do if someone Sit Miss Marks though. I'm going to kill them. Fifth. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Fifth. Fifth. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I have realized though that apparently he he has not written his songs because even that was horrible. <laughs> he said, "You're the fortune in my cookie, the vet to my rookie." I like that part though. Did you? The vet to my rookie. That's that's nice. That's strong. What the fuck does that mean to you? <laughs> She don't know, she just like it. I mean, she the old head and he the youngin. I think the vet to my rookie. No, that shit sounds like some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I all thought of, it was all cute. All of it sounds like you put your vagina on my but, face and I'm turned out. And I what does it matter what you think? Me. She's the woman. She thinks it's nice and special. I thought Fuck that was that. cute. If somebody sent you some shit like that, I'll smoke him. <laughs> oh, Finn. I'm sorry. Finn. Definitely appreciate y'all checking us out for our first show of episode. so of so unprofessional. Shout out to my lawyers. You, you only shoot. got one. I'm sorry. Shout out to my lawyers. All right. Make sure y'all check out uh, what's the what's the website? www.gardnerlawdefense.com. And this is our in-house lawyer. So whenever we talk about law issues, we're gonna get her a favorite bottle of wine and have her come in and speak about everything that goes against whatever the fuck I'm thinking. (laughs) Because everything that I'm thinking about is somebody's gotta go. So if you got caught with a DUI, if you got caught child support, speeding, if you got caught with a kilo of cocaine. Oh, whoa, 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 fifth. I ain't been caught with a kilo. Somebody out there got caught with a key. All right. And they could probably afford to give her a nice chunk of change. All right, all right. If you murdered your wife. Fifth, what the fuck? Well, maybe somebody sent one of those out August Alcina things. Yo, I'm not murdering my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, he murdered the woman that had the young blood. I just wanted to be good. I just wanted to be good. I just wanted young blood. Make sure y'all call Yo, up this Brittany and, Gardner. And young blood. <laughs> I just That's what Will Smith, he gonna put his hand around you like. Boom. <laughs> I just wanna be clear. I just gotta put this out there to our watching neighborhood. I won't disclose who the love of my life is. But if you send one of those Instagram posts <laughs> to my love, Scoop, <laughs> Delaware, Chesapeake, what do I all have in common? <laughs> A body of water. <laughs> <laughs> when you're headed. <laughs> oh, my bad. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Peace. Peace.